We have a global problem that requires a global solution. We need the best science in the world. We need the best manufacturing in the world. If we have anybody left over anywhere as a reservoir of virus, it not only threatens them, but, but threatens the world. You know, this, this is costing us two to four trillion dollars for this outbreak right now. So even if we can uh, move forward vaccines by one or two weeks, it may pay for itself. The collaboration is unprecedented. Normally, we have paper processes which take weeks and months to get feedback. Today, we talk about getting feedback from regulators within the day. The collaborations are really very, very intense. Even over the weekend, uh, we are having meetings with regulators around the world at the moment. So it's really exceptionally, uh, exceptionally special as, as you go through it. And you see the commitment of everything, everybody in, involved. Our goal is ideally in the summer to start very large uh, clinical trial phase three or pivotal studies. And you're talking, you know, thousands of people, maybe you know, up to 10,000 people across many different hospitals around the world. And the goal will be to be in a position to potentially, assuming everything goes well, to go to the regulators and to actually ask for product approval as early as the end of this year. They will have to review the, the file, which will lead to potential approval in the first quarter of the first half of 21. That's for approval that can be used for millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people. Where we will take over is in the manufacturing side and then ultimately, obviously, scale up and distribution. And that has to be done in partnership with industry. So the challenge for this is industry, of course, can invest in in making sure there's manufacturing, but they need to know that somebody's gonna buy it. And that's what we're trying to create now is an advanced market commitment with push and pull. What's going to be important here and what's very unique is that we go have to go so fast and so huge because where Ebola was a problem in Central Africa with a few hundred thousand vaccines, you can get it under control. Here you need billions of vaccines. And that's where industry comes in, I think, is that, that you need a large contingent of people with a lot of experience to develop vaccines fast and globally. Um, and then you need in parallel, not just sequential, but you need to start already preparing manufacturing long before you have your, your clinical results available. It's absolutely the, the challenge of getting to enough uh, vials, filling capacity, but also drug substance, vaccine itself production. You know, it's unprecedented that probably several vaccines will are going to be made in a billion type of quantity. Uh, we count today on doing five vaccines per vial because uh, there is no other way to get a billion vaccines to people in, uh, in 18 months if you don't start uh, working like that. Ebola was an opportunity to come together and experiment with this, but not at the scale we're talking about. And this is why the private sector is critical. Paul talked about the private sector for vaccines, but let me talk about a different role for the private sector, which is going to be in distribution, bringing innovation in. How do we do last mile? We're working with UPS on that. We're working with drones to deliver equipment. We try to make sure that there is a very large capacity available so that the 
quantity can, can support a large part of the world and, and fighting for equitable access in the world, that people can get access wherever they need it in the world is very important. If we don't solve this infection in every part of the world, it will not be solved for the world. And that's where an unprecedented global collaboration will be needed and speed. Yeah? Days count, hours count, not just for the economy, but just for every, every life which will be lost if we do this not fast enough.